Howdy, folks. Welcome back again to another edition of Ideas and Images. And as per usual, I have a very special guest for you tonight, a distinguished guest, Nina Kovalenko. Nina, welcome to Ideas and Images. Thank you. Nina's a internationally known writer and an artist, but we'll be dealing with literary things as usual. And as usual, you know that a writer has to draw on life's experience, his or hers or somebody else's. And Nina's experience has been rather difficult and bitter. And she uses that, that experience in her writing, that wealth of experience to draw upon. It's the material, the raw material from which she draws her great writing. Let's tell us a little bit about yourself, Nina. Where were you born <coughs> um, and raised? I'm very appreciated you for a chance to say uh, hello and wish you very nice weather. I was born in Siberia, in a small village, in the family of all believers. It's conservative branch of Russian Orthodox fight. And I was working, uh, when I was 13, I started to work in collective farms. Then I came to Moscow, uh, to study cinematography in cinematography college institute. I then worked, married, divorced, lived in Moscow. Then I was working as journalist for newspaper in Siberia. Then went back to Moscow and I painted, exhibited, wrote stories. And I joined Peace Movement. And I was imprisoned Excuse for my me. peace activity. I'll break her up. I don't mean to interrupt. What kind of peace movement did you join? Uh, I joined a group for establishing trust and confidence between East and West. Mm -hmm. And okay. we were visited by guests from United States, uh, from uh, England, from Germany, from all countries what have peace activists and... Okay, thank you. Could you continue? Yes. In 1987, I came to United States with my daughter and continued to work, to write. And in 1993, uh, I published my first book. Besides this book, I published many stories in Russian magazines. Is this your first book, Nina? Yes. Could you read us the title, please? In Russian language, Neopoznanные летающие объекты. You hold it and show it to the camera, please. What does it mean in English? Uh, UFOs. <coughs> Actually, UFO. Yes. <coughs> Unidentified flying objects. Actually, UFOs in this book, uh, heroes, uh, people, and people who belong to different worlds, and they introduce different cultures, different uh, maybe traditions, and they meet each other, connect to each other. Sometimes they misunderstand each other. Sometimes they love each other, take apart, go apart, meet again. And sometimes they steal UFOs for each other because they belong to different worlds. That's his book about. So you believe that people uh, kind of bump into each other but really don't understand each other? Sometimes. 
sometimes. Yes. And in addition to this book, um, you also, you said uh, you write, or you did write, journalism, articles? Yes, I was writing articles about culture events, about the new movies. That's it. That's In Russia? Profession. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you are also, or were, a dissident. Would you like to tell us what that means? A uh, dissident is a person who is thinking different from all other uh, in my case, I was dissident because I was against the war, against violence. What war? All wars? I'm against any kind of wars. I think uh, we are high educated <coughs> enough to avoid the situation of war, violence. It's a conversation. Yes. Well, there are many people who agree with you. Why would you be labeled a dissident or nonconformist? Uh, maybe because it was time, 1981. Uh, it was situation of war in Russia. Uh, uh, actually, in Russia, the, it's very important for young people when they reach age before 19, now 18, they have to go to serve army. Uh, but since 1980, probably, or 79, uh, young people, 